David says, I'm looking for some experienced feedback. We have lots of clients who have Office 365 E3s, which as you may be aware, provides 100 gigabytes of mailbox and unlimited archives. This works well for those users who just uh, don't want to do anything like delete old mail. We've now come across situations where some of the users in an org are reaching their 100 gig archive mailbox, and the plan is to enable the auto expanding archive mailbox feature that then will allow them to grow to a stupid, this is his words, to a stupid 1.5 terabytes each. Checking out the service description and other posts, it all looks logical and easy to set up and turn on. But in practice, has anyone got any views on why I shouldn't turn it on? No matter what I say, the client is not going to delete their mail. They're not going to housekeep. Any hands-on experience would be great before I suggest something else, albeit I don't have anything to actually offer. Oh, man. I got to tell you, you're, you're not solving the problem. Okay, you you have you have bigger problems. You're giving the just, user free needles. <laughs> <laughs> you really are. Think about this. You know. Yeah. I mean, I understand this last state. One of his last statements was around, you know, no matter what I say to the client, they're not going to delete their emails. Yeah, I don't think you're saying the right things to the client, because literally, it's 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 garbage. I mean, it doesn't need to be there, number one. And if you do have it, you can have, you have legal hold, right? You have all these other features that you can use if you have to have something for seven years or something like that. But otherwise, the, you know, there's really no reason for it. And 1.5 terabyte, I mean, come on. It, that's like, you know, if you're going to, if you're actually going to dump that mailbox, what do you, what are you going to do with all that? Are you going to have a PST file that's 1.5 terabyte? Are you gonna? I mean, let's let's think about the problem in a bigger picture, not just hey, these people are saying no to deleting their stuff, so I'm just gonna give them more disk space. I mean, remember, remember the old days? They'd be like, just throw disk at it. Yeah. Just throw, you know, they they don't want to do anything. They don't want to solve any problems. Just go ahead and throw disk at it. You know, throw hardware at it, and it'll all be it'll all be better. You know, um, it's kind of like you know taking aspirin. Uh, for a pain, you're just covering the pain. You're not eliminating the pain. You're just covering it. Um, and in this case, you're covering the pain of doing stupid things with email, like <laughs> keeping stuff forever yeah. and never archiving anything. Well, there's there's a, going in and enforcing some kind of a classification system, uh, uh, forcing them to classify their content in email, to add labels to it, and then having life cycle parameters that you you know that you enforce across the organization let people know well in advance give them six months say hey in, in six months time anything that's not marked as you know important classified whatever it is you know will then get archived it'll go into this process and then it'll be gone and so that forces people to go through and classify their content because maybe maybe there's some reason why um, that they they need that, um, but just to to not have the lifecycle management in place around a, email archives, um, you're just you're setting yourself up for tremendous pain in the future. Oh, especially with the having it up in 365, because you need to retrieve that, and when you yeah. do that, when you do that retrieval, that can be incredibly painful um, for the large files, right? Because you're you're it's not just like you're have the server sitting right next to you you have the disk local that's 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 not how all this works so it's, a well, it's the cloud mike so it's all around yeah us, so yeah that's everywhere yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well the i think all of that the main thing is you got to make sure that what's in it for the person you're trying to convince them to get rid of this old mail right First of all, you're opening up your company up to liability for stuff that's hanging around that shouldn't be right. there anymore. Right. So you have which is why you want the policies in place, right? Exactly. exactly. Why you have a stand? You have to take a stance and you have to, you know, enforce it. And but there are other options like they have the archive and you can move it to the archive. I put a couple of links in the resource sheet for 
um, creating search folders that'll go look for large mail and old mail. And you're like, tell me everything that's over seven years old. And it, it, it doesn't move it from its norm, its home. It just searches all of your folders. I had this woman that had over 90,000 emails and she's like, I can't even delete them. Because when you go to delete them, it creates a little quasi copy to move it to delete. Yeah, and it was so right. full she couldn't even right. delete stuff right. so we had to move things into a into a pst and then delete them but mm -hmm. it's like why do you need 90,000 emails and she goes it takes forever for it to search i'm like really really Shut yeah <laughs> think about it well and she probably had offline cache mode enabled too so everything was getting moved down into a cache yeah. on her local machine so outlook was just kind of like freaking out trying to figure out trying to index this thing and figure out you know hey how am i going to manage this because outlook actually has to manage it it has to index it it has to you know if you want to do a search um i i know that you just you're causing yourself more pain than necessary <laughs> absolutely and so by getting rid of the old stuff you can you know speed up your search so that's what's in it for them you know, fix their problem. And then the other thing, um, I use OneNote to archive my emails. And I do that for a couple of reasons. Um, I have a project that I'm working on. Maybe I have a folder in my Outlook that has all of those project emails. I can take that whole folder and in one fell swoop say, send it to OneNote. And it's more searchable in OneNote than it actually is in um, Outlook because it searches even the attachments that are in there. It'll, it takes the attachments with it. Then I can close that notebook, put it on a shelf in and whatever my SharePoint site or wherever, and I can go look at it if I need it. So it's out of the way. And, you know, I love that the attachments are searchable. So to get it out of my inbox, make my searches faster in Outlook and more robust if you put it in OneDrive. So I put links for both of those in the resource sheet for you. I don't, that's my two cents. <laughs> A little passionate about it because, the, the, you know, 90,000 emails, really? What? Why? Like you with the 1.5 terabyte. Why? <laughs> yeah, crazy.